Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. Let's learn how to deal with pinholes in a vacuum bag when we're doing vacuum resin infusion. Originally, this video was intended to be a video showing a successful vacuum resin infusion. But instead, it ended up becoming a video about how to deal with pinholes in your vacuum bag when you're doing the vacuum-assisted resin infusion. At the end of this video, I'll go over a few lessons learned. Up in the corner here, you will see a card that is a link to a previous video that I did. And in fact, it was a video covering this very same vacuum infusion attempt where I talked about how to pleat a vacuum bag. So this is just a carry-on of that video where I am doing the vacuum infusion. The vacuum bag that I used for this attempt was some surplus, a clearance vacuum bag that I got. It is a non-stretchable vacuum bag and very thin. Unfortunately, I have now run out of that vacuum bag. This was the last of the vacuum bag. My next attempts will be using some stretching vacuum bag. So if you're interested in how to deal with pinholes, keep watching. Before the video gets going, let's talk a little bit about where we're starting. Down in the left-hand corner, you can see a little orange semicircle. That's just the edge of the epoxy resin trap, and that's got a vacuum pulled on it. There's a tube from that epoxy resin trap running to an outlet port down on the mold and the part. That's pulling a vacuum on the part. I've already pulled it down all the way to 24 inches of mercury. In the process of pulling it down, before it pulled it down too tight, pulled out all of the wrinkles in the middle of the part. I didn't want any wrinkles there that could potentially let air run down through that wrinkle if I had leaks and make it more difficult to find out where the air leak was. Over on the right hand side of the part, you can see the inlet port where epoxy will run into the part. I have a clamp on that right now, clamp down so no epoxy is running in, and that's the little device on the hose there with the blue round handle. And then the hose is running over into my resin cup that's being held by the blue painter's tape. For the mold, I'm using a quarter inch thick piece of acrylic. I wanted to be able to look underneath the part as the resin is flowing in case I've got some air leaks. I can see what that looks like. And I can actually just see how the resin flows just because I'm curious what it looks like. It's time to let the epoxy in. So I open up the knob on the clamp, which will open up the tube and let the epoxy flow from the epoxy cup down through the port. Now the port has quite a bit of space inside of it. So it takes a little while to fill up that space inside that port before it actually starts flowing out. I've placed some spiral tubing along the edge. It, it runs underneath that port from one side of the part to the other side of the part. The epoxy will run through that port into that spiral tubing and then run down the spiral tubing and come out through the gaps in that spiral and into the blue flow media. Like I said, it takes quite a while for that uh, epoxy to fill up that port before it starts coming out. And you can just start to see it coming out there on one side. It's coming out on the other side also, but that crease there in the vacuum bag makes it so you can't really see it. And it's flowing pretty slow. Now I've got a little phone on the bottom side taking a, a, a video and I wanted to see what it looked like. And you can tell from this video that it hasn't spread as far on the bottom as it has on the top. So that's fairly obvious that it takes just a little bit of time for that epoxy to soak down through. And in this case it's just one layer of carbon fiber, uh, six ounce carbon fiber right here. It takes a little while to soak down through there. So you can see on the top, it's gone quite a bit farther than it has on the bottom. And since it's taken a little while to run this, I decided to speed it up a little bit. Now you can see on the bottom, it, that epoxy has hit kind of a line there. That's where it's hitting the 
other layer of carbon fiber and it had a piece of masking tape on the edge when I cut it. So it's apparent that the epoxy has little trouble seeping down through that uh, uh, masking tape. So it's really just coming soaking in underneath it. Now we get to the interesting part. Right there is a pinhole leak. Although at the moment, in, when I was recording this, I didn't realize that was. I'm putting pressure on it, trying to figure out where the air is coming from. So I thought, well, maybe there's a possibility that there's leak here over on the edge, and then the air is running underneath the part, underneath the carbon fiber, maybe popping up there. So I'm looking for some leaks there along the edge. I'm looking at creases there in the pleat, pressing it down, trying to make sure there aren't any leaks there. And then I said, well, let's see what it looks like from underneath. So here in a moment, I will get underneath and see what it looks like from under there. See, I'm putting pressure on it here, trying to see if, I, if it really is a pinhole. And with me putting my finger on it, it's not stopping, which makes me think, well, maybe it's not a pinhole. Maybe it really is leaking from somewhere underneath. So here's where I get underneath and look. And this, you can't really see from this video, there just isn't enough resolution. But I'm looking under there and I cannot see any air running anywhere underneath. Now, over where that arrow is, there's another pinhole leak, although I haven't seen it yet when I was recording this. So I finally decided, okay, let's just put a piece of the sticky tape on there and see if that'll stop it. So I'm right now I'm cutting a piece of that sticky tape and I'm going to stick it on there here in a second. Now watch this. Immediately the air bubble stopped entering the part. And you can see the trailing edge there going along. And when I saw that, I said, hey, all right, this works. I, and I also noticed that other leak, and now I'm cutting another piece. So I'm going to put it over on that one. And voila, immediately the air bubble stopped. So that got me pretty excited. So now I've got this sped up to uh, four times. Because it takes a little while for this epoxy to run through, so no need to, to wait for that to run. Now those two holes aren't the last of the air leaks. Now here pretty quick there's going to be one right in the middle of that epoxy wave front. There it is. You can barely see it. but the, And we got two more coming up pretty quick here. There'll be another one up toward the top edge and then you also you can already see another one near on the nearer edge. You can barely see it there. Now here I noticed I was getting close to emptying out my resin cup so I was closing down the clamp to stop it. And you can actually see some air bubbles there in that tubing. Now you'll notice that the epoxy front still hasn't gotten all the way through the part, but it's still advancing. There's a reason for that. There is a vacuum gradient across this part. There is very high vacuum there at the output port where it's pulling the vacuum. There is a much lower vacuum came over toward the input side where I've got the clamp. And just as an aside there, I had played with that clamp valve again. The reason for that is I had noticed a little more epoxy had run down toward the clamp. There was about, oh, six inches or so. So I opened up the clamp, let that run in. And then I thought, you know, I'm not sure I have enough epoxy to fix this. So I lifted the tube up in the air to try to get just a little bit more epoxy that was in that tube to run down. And then I'll let that into the part and, and then clamp it again. But you can see the epoxy's almost made it up to the port now. So, oh, but getting back to uh, what I was talking about, the pressure is much lower where that clamp is. On one side of the clamp, it's atmospheric pressure. On the other side, it's not a whole lot lower than atmospheric pressure. But as you're running through the part, getting closer and closer to where we're pulling the vacuum, the vacuum gets greater and greater. Well, that means that the pressure pushing down on the vacuum bag close to the inlet is not pressing as hard. That means it's a little bit thicker. There's more epoxy volume there near the input and it's very low toward the output. Once we clamp off that input tubing, the pressure will slowly start to equalize down to our 24 inches of mercury. Well, that means that the pressure on the vacuum bag, the atmospheric pressure, 
is pressing harder and harder as the vacuum gets greater and greater underneath that input and it starts pressing epoxy out of the part near the input pressing it toward the output and that's why after you clamp off that clamp on the input line that epoxy wave front will still be flowing toward the output it'll get slower and slower as that uh, epoxy toward the input port gets pressed down harder and harder and can't be pressed anymore let me replay a little bit of the video that i didn't get to while i was talking about this vacuum gradient across the part now you can see me playing around with the corner up there what had happened is there was another leak there and it's a significant leak you can see all the little air bubbles there right up in there in that upper left hand corner and so i'm looking and looking and playing with the pleat trying to figure out what in the world's going on there i finally decided it wasn't the pleat or at least not the sticky tape at the pleat. There must have been another pinhole up in a fold and I just could not locate it. So I finally said, you know what? It's right at the output side. It's not gonna hurt the part because that's gonna be cut off there where that leak is. And so I said, ah, heck with it. We'll just let it go. What are the lessons learned from this experiment? I probably won't buy the non-stretchable vacuum bag when it's on clearance anymore. I'm guessing that the pinholes in that vacuum bag either occurred during manufacturing or during handling at the supplier. It was probably near the end of the roll of the vacuum bag and it had been handled many times. It could have picked up some pinholes on their cutting table from being rolled and unrolled and having a little bit of debris on that table. So stay tuned for more videos on my vacuum resin infusion attempts.